Horse racing has always been, and always will be, the sport of kings. Thundering hooves and thousand-pound beasts has meant that this very male preserve is often fraught with danger. For centuries, the role of women at racing events was confined to the sidelines, their only worry being which dresses and hats to wear. Women in any other racing capacity was unheard of. It wasn't until the late 1960s that they started to compete against men at all, and even then, most were badly treated or ignored. Trainers and owners just didn't think that the fairer sex could handle the brutal one-ton beasts. In the third part of our series on women who competed against men and won, we meet a woman who changed the world of racing forever. That woman was Julie Crone. At just 4 feet 10 and 100 pounds, she refused to let convention stand in her way. I was so spunky in my approach, you know. I, I, was, I was absolutely relentless and, you know, and I'd make things up or you know, I'd stick a pretend mustache on and I'd go like, hey, I'm, I'm a Jack Crone and, you know, I'm a new jockey and like to make, you know, and I guess sometimes I broke down some of the barriers that way. Born in Michigan in 1963, Crone was raised on a farm where her parents let her and her brother Donnie run wild. At five, she led her horse into the house for her mother to saddle. At nine, she harnessed a Great Dane to a sled and went for a ride in the snow. And at 15, her mother forged her birth certificate so she could work at Churchill Downs. Over the next two decades, she was to become the most successful female jockey ever. We caught up with Julie in California, where she now lives, to find out more about her 20-year career. I've ridden at the fair tracks, um, which were like am real amateur racing, but you kind of get paid, but it's like smaller time. And there was this lady that she goes, oh, well, my husband helps one apprentice jockey every year. Maybe he'll help you this year. So he saw me and he was kind of like, uh, oh, so you want to be a jockey? And I said, uh, no, sir, Mr. Pace, I'm going to be a jockey. That was enough to persuade trainer Jerry Pace to give the girl a chance. Invited into his stable as a trainee jockey, it was the only invitation that truly needed. A couple of weeks later, they put me on my first winner, which was, uh, you know, that's a kind of, I kept racing in the stretch thinking, okay, when are they going to pass me? And no one ever passed me, and I stood up after the wire, and I was kind of like, I won! You know, I couldn't believe it. It was really exciting. Fair enough. Crone began working her way up, battling fellow jockeys and winning races. Rakish air at the rail is third, through the stretch and to the wire. Consent gives Julie Crone her third winner of the night. Despite her obvious talent, just getting an everyday ride was a struggle. It wasn't so much of like, you know, oh, I don't believe in you. It was just there was no, there was no way on earth that a girl jockey could come along and... Um, be capable of, you know, riding a racehorse properly. There was just no way. Like, so not only did you, you know, not get to get a chance and then mess up, but you just got no chance at all. But the ladylike image which some owners and trainers backed away from couldn't have been further from the real Julie. No, don't call me a lead No, I never called you. In 1986, a fellow jockey hit her with his whip and she punched him in the face. He pushed her into the jockey swimming pool, and she hit him with a chair. In 1989, she exchanged blows with jockey Joe Bravo and left him with fewer teeth. It was a reputation that earned her as many fines as it did respect. You have to be feisty whether you're a man or a woman. Just because Julie is a woman doesn't mean that she had to react in a ladylike fashion. Uh, a lot of times she would act like a man and, and get very aggressive and actually want to fight sometimes. But she was feisty and whoever she reacted that way to had it coming. You can believe me. If somebody like shaved me off in a race or something, I, I would be mad and I was like young and I was an athlete and I was strong and I was, uh, you know, like all the things that make a person a good athlete. Uh, and they, they would just come out and I'd be like, you know, you stupid jerk, you shut me off. And I would never think you know, oh, I'm a girl doing this and stuff, because I did, I worked so hard on being almost like, uh, like sexless almost when I rode, just so I could ride, so just be a jockey. And those were sometimes the biggest compliments I got, you know, as Julie doesn't, you know, ride like a girl jockey, she's just a jockey. 
but she wasn't just a jockey. In fact, during the 1980s, she won a total of 1,898 races. Rosie Brown is third, baby. Has a race to the wire. Still, this wild streak spilled over into her personal life. In 1983, authorities found marijuana in her car, and Julie was banned from racing for 60 days. Then, in 1986, her mother, the driving force behind her career, was diagnosed with cancer. My goodness, she was so strong. And uh, maybe some of the fortitude that she had and her strength was you know, kind of one of the things that I inherited along the way. And, and not until she had to fight with something did I ever Notice, you know, while there's many traits in her that I have, the same. Uh, we never had any regrets or didn't say goodbye. We were very thorough and complete in our relationship, and it was very special to, you know, and when, even when she passed away, her and I exchanged a lot of things, like, boy, we didn't miss anything, did we? And we'd be like, nope. Instead of falling apart, her mother's illness gave her strength, and in 1987, she became the first woman to win a racing title at a major track. In 1992, she was the first woman to ride in the Kentucky Derby and one of only a handful of American riders to win five races in one day. But it was 1993 that proved to be her most successful year. The 125th Belmont Stakes was her race. There's a lot of things in racing that don't even have to be sensationalized, and they're sensational. And that's just what it's like um, to ride in the Belmont. As one of the three Triple Crown races, the Belmont Stakes is one of North America's most preeminent events. Riding 13 to 1 Longshot Colonial Affair, it was to be Julie's crowning glory. Gap on the outside at the rail. That's Wild Gale as Sea Hero drops back and Colonial Affair with Julie Crone start to move out in the middle of the racetrack. I swung him out to the outside and he like started grabbing the bridle and pulling more and more. And he turned for home and the announcer you know, was like, and Julie Crone riding for her life. Here comes Colonial Affair on the outside. And now Colonial Affair with Julie Crone takes command and draws clear. It's just like, it's just like, it's almost like watching yourself in a movie. It's Colonial Affair drawing clear in the Belmont with only a furlong to go. Colonial Affair leads it. It's going to be Colonial Affair winning it by two lengths. I stood up after the wire and I was like, I just won the Belmont, you know, and I was just like, and the first thing I thought of is like, I wonder what my mom is doing right now. I wonder where my mom is. Julie became the first woman to win a Triple Crown race. It earned her the respect that she'd worked so hard to achieve. She had wonderful hands, very, very kind with a horse. Horses really responded for her. They really relaxed for her early in a race, and, and she'd shake them up as good as any man would. And when she did that, she won a lot of big races. I know she beat me a lot of times. But for Julie, the good times had come to an end. Just two months after her Belmont win, she suffered a near-fatal fall and spent nine months in rehabilitation. Just a year after returning to racing, she suffered a second serious fall. It was to have a dramatic effect on her life. Suddenly this like pro athlete with no problems and always capable of handling things and overcoming adversities, you know, suddenly I was this like pitiful, depressed, you know, quiet, it was just this awful situation. Oh, and I just rode terrible. I would have these terrible anxiety attacks. I'd go, oh, I'm gonna fall and everything's just gonna be terrible. And, you know, I'd lie to people on the outside, you know, let's go get them and, you know, we'll do this in the race. And on the inside, I was like, why am I doing this? I hate being a jockey. You know, why am I racing? Depression, anxiety, and nightmares led to thoughts of suicide. Julie couldn't see a way out. A chance meeting with a psychiatrist led to her being diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. It was only then that the depression began to make sense. Slowly, the joy came back to racing. Julie returned to winning ways, and by the time she retired in April 1999, after an 18-year career, she'd amassed a staggering 3,545 wins and prize money of $81 million. Just a year after her retirement, she was inducted into Thoroughbred Racing's Hall of Fame. Being inducted to the Hall of Fame, like, is such an acknowledgement of, of my accomplishments by, by my peers and by people that judge racing on a constant basis. It's the most pleasurable, uh, you know, solid, heartwarming, you know, gesture from everyone in racing that 
it, it completed my life and my racing career in a, in a big way. Julie Crone had become an icon and she was the interview the media all wanted. Racing journalist Jay Hovde was one of Crone's admirers and pursued her for the interview. Luckily for him, she was as determined in her private life as she had been professionally. We uh, encountered each other next a full year later. A couple months later she asked me out and then she asked me out again. And then she was inducted into the Hall of Fame and she asked me out again and I finally said yes to a simple dinner. I don't know what my trouble was, I don't know why I waited so long. But um, six months later I asked her to marry me. Mr. and Mrs. Hovde now live in Carlsbad, Southern California. At weekends, Julie fronts a racing program at Hollywood Park in Los Angeles, and Jay continues to write for the daily racing form. With two cats, two dogs, and plenty of horses, Julie now has everything she's ever dreamed of. There's nothing I want. I'm like the happiest person in the world. Like, I don't even want to go on vacation. I want to stay home because my house, it's like right by the water, we have great neighbors. I'm close to my barn where my horses are. And I never imagined five or six years ago if somebody would have said, okay, you're going to move to California. Uh, you're, you're not going to be adversely affected by your mom's passing away. You're not going to be a jockey anymore. I would have been like, oh, come on, you know? I would have never imagined it. And it's all, it's so fun and it's such a, a surprise. And it's such a pleasant surprise. 